Hi, my name is Paul Prentice. I work for Front Range Anglers in Boulder, Colorado. And today we're going to tie some interesting new streamer patterns. Uh, patterns that are built off of a cotter pin, or cotter pins I should say. And here's some examples of a few that I've tied uh, here in the last okay. uh, hour or so. Our basic material is, is cotter pin, or cotter pins I should say, a gamagatsu uh, octopus hook for a trailer, and in this case I'm using a size 6. I'm using uh, some brass beads, orange color. It could be glass or brass, doesn't really make any difference. I've got some Montana fly fish eyes uh, for my eyes, and then I'm, I'm going to be using a piece of uh, gel spun backing, and then with the, with the beads uh, on, down on the backing and the hook attached. Okay, step number one is to uh, make a cut on the cotter pin so that it will uh, fit into the vise. You'll notice I've cut this one so and the reason I've done that is so that I can slip it into my vise. And you I'm using a, a all right. I'm start out here and we're going to lay this thread all the way down. Now I've taken the gel spun and I've attached it to the octopus hook. Just done it Put a, a loop on so that it's on just like that. Pulled it forward. Put a couple of beads there. The beads help keep keep the hook down, and they also help keep the hook away from the wing. So I'm going to put that on. Just lay that on the top. Move the thread back up the shank of the cutter pin. Get to the front here, and I'm going to double this over, and that will secure it so it won't come off. Body of craft fur that's been spun on it. It's not created a dubbing brush here, and if you and this one has got uh, gray fur on the back part, and then it's got white on the front, and you'll notice it's got a little bit of tinsel worked in. So I'm going to lay this on gray in the back. Put that right on top. And I'm going to put it a little bit off to the side here. That way I can... I could have done this with two different brushes, but I just decided it would be a little bit easier to do it this way. So as I wrap this, I'm going to wrap it around the shank, and I'm going to keep... I'm going to try to keep these fibers from getting tangled up as I wrap forward. See that's nice and full. I want to leave plenty of room for the head. So I'm going to put that on right about here. Alright, so I've got my bodkin here. I'm just kind of getting these fibers that are trapped. They were trapped during the wrapping process fill this wing out just a little bit, I'm going to put just a little bit more craft fur, and I want it, it's a little bit gray, and I want it a little bit lighter for the top of the wing here, so I'm going to put, position that right about there, put that on, alright, it's got a nice shape, swing this around this way, so I'd like to have a little bit of color on the bottom. So I'll take some more craft fur. This is kind of a fire orange, I guess. Put this right on the bottom. Generally on these flies I like to have a little bit of color. And this does the job. Okay. So we're just about done here. So I put a little flash on both sides and I've now stuck the eyes on and so I want to secure those and what I will use is tuffle eye. I found that this stuff really works great.
Just use a bodkin to kind of work it down and around where I want it. I can get on the eyes, but I'll try to keep it off if I can. Hit that with the blue light. It takes about uh, 20 seconds for it to set up, something like that. So if you count to 20, that will generally do it. Okay. This stuff is an epoxy alternative, and it's actually harder than epoxy, and it and it doesn't yellow like epoxy does or crack. So once it sets up, and it has a, a bit of a a little bit of a sticky film on it. So if you don't like that, what you do is you get some Sally Hansen's hard as nails or hard as hull finish and you can just kind of coat the head and that and then it gives it a nice glossy finish with no tack. Pretty much almost a finished fly. So here it is and you'll notice I'll pull this pull my body back and you can see you can see that the cotter pin is sticking out here. So I'm, what I'm going to need to do is trim that. So I don't want that piece there. So this is my last step. So I'm going to trim that. Okay. So now we have a completed fly. This is a little bit bigger than I would normally use for trout, but it would be this would be a great wiper fly or a bass fly. And it'll sink like crazy because that cotter pin is really heavy. It'll go down and it has a, and it'll have great action. And it's kind of it's got a gray body and a white wing and a little bit of red gills down here. So that's how you do these. And you can do like I say all different styles. And you could instead of using what I did here for a body, you could use chenille, you could use, uh, you could use uh, uh, just a variety of different materials, create a different kind of body, use uh, different wing material, and create all different, kind of, all different kinds of versions of this same fly. So it's simply a matter of the creativity you'd like to, to do.